Watch it guys, today we'll take a look at how to protect your SSD and extend its lifespan. Now, hard drives are not completely dead just yet, but an SSD has no moving parts, it's super fast, and they're super small, and it makes it super easy to install. Now, this is for any brand of SSD we're going to be talking about today, and how to protect it and extend its lifespan for any type of SSD or SSD NVMe. But first, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Cells. So if you're looking for Windows 10 Pro OEM key or Windows 11 Pro OEM key or Office or any other products, check out the links in the video description, create an account on CD Key Sales website and use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply this to your order and get a 30% discount. Once you have your key, you'll be able to activate your version of Windows. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is avoiding extreme temperatures. If you look at a cheap motherboard, it doesn't have any sort of heat spreader on the board and when you're plugging in your SSD NVMe drive in there it's going to get pretty hot so you definitely want to try and get one with some sort of heat spreader on there if your board doesn't have a heat spreader you can use an aftermarket one from Amazon and you can get these pretty cheap so if your board doesn't have one of these on there then you want to head over to Amazon I'll try and leave some links in the video description and basically all you're doing is looking for an NVMe cooler or an SSD NVMe cooler or something like that and you should see a bunch of them. I've made a video on this before and it reduced the heat on that NVMe drive by a massive amount and I use one of these ones here and they're pretty cheap around about seven dollars. So I think sometimes using something like this is a really good option if your motherboard doesn't have some sort of heat spreader which will dissipate the heat on that NVMe drive and you'll get thermal pads in the kit as well which you can apply along the top do not remove the sticker on the NVMe drive because you're basically going to avoid your warranty. So choose which one you want to use and make sure it fits on your motherboard and you should be pretty much good to go from there. There's plenty to choose from and this can keep the temperatures running pretty cool. Now on my main system I have now on the back of the board there is no heat spreader and the temperatures on that drive can get a bit toasty sometimes. You can also use software which you can get from the manufacturer's website and check out the temperatures of your actual drive. You can see mine is running at 39 Celsius, which is pretty cool for an NVMe drive. Now, the faster the drive generally means higher temperatures and you have to keep an eye on some of these temperatures, especially if you don't have any adequate cooling on that motherboard, especially if it's a board that is a pretty cheap budget board. Now, if you do have an SSD, which is an unbranded one, which is from China or something like that, or a cheaper unknown brand, then you can use something like HW Info to check the temperatures because some of those don't come with their own software like the one I just showed you. So you can use HW Info and it will tell you the temperature of the drive. It'll also tell you drive failure and it'll also tell you a bunch of other stuff on here, which is your terabytes written, the total amount of writes to that drive, which is important also. So that is part of what you need to keep an eye on if you're running a super fast NVMe drive. You can also check the manufacturer's website and it will normally give you all the information you need about your drive that you've got in your system. And it will tell you the maximum thermals that that drive can run at. So I'm gonna head over to this website here, which has this drive in this machine. And you'll see right down here, it will give you the information about the drive and it will also tell you the maximum thermals and the recommended optimal thermals for that particular drive to run at. And this is important because if you're running some sort of very small machine with very little airflow in them and it just gets a bit hot in there, it can also raise the temperature on the actual drive itself. So bear that in mind. You can see operating temperatures are here and non operating temperatures are below. So this will give you the information basically on what the best recommended temperatures are for that particular drive. Let's move on to number two, which is don't completely fill up your SSD with data. I see so many people buying an SSD and basically using it to its maximum capacity. Now, what will happen is it will start to slow down and it will also cause blue screens and a lot of other issues for you. As much as people will tell you it won't harm the SSD, you're actually causing yourself a lot of problems by running at the drive at maximum capacity. Windows needs to have a bit of space to function properly. For instance, if you want to run tasks, like for instance, 
uh, the Windows optimization on your drive, which is the old sort of defrag. It's going to use a trim on the drive and clean out any sort of junk, and it will basically run this. Sometimes it needs a storage space available so it can do all this, and then it will basically erase all of that. You can run into problems where it won't run this task, and that's because you don't have enough space on the drive. Also, there's other things as well, like Windows updates. Updating your drive, it might be a feature update where it will need at least 30 gigs of space available for it to roll out a, an update properly. And if you don't have that space available, you're going to run into issues. And this is why it's important to have uh, space available. Now, if you run an update on this system, this is what can happen. Basically, you'll run the update. It will start going into a reboot mode and you'll get caught in an updating reboot loop where it's trying to update and it has to roll back. And you'll constantly do this because you don't have enough space on that drive. You may even see some sort of message popping up on the screen saying undoing uh, the Windows update. It should look something like this where it says Windows couldn't complete the updates, uh, undoing changes. And this is common when the drive is full and it has no space left to roll this update out. So you definitely don't want to be doing that. And there's plenty of other reasons like wear leveling and other things like that, which are much more uh, technical. Another thing is to take care of is excessive use of secure delete on files. I see this quite a bit where people are so paranoid of what's on their computer and they keep running programs like Bleachbit or other programs where they're secure racing data on the drive. This is not a mechanical drive. This is a SSD. And if you keep scrubbing the drive with major overwrites to delete files and wiping free space on a regular basis on that drive, it's going to add wear and tear to that drive. That is more terabytes written to the drive as you keep scrubbing the drive. So you don't want to be doing that, especially with an SSD. They're very sensitive to this sort of stuff. And if you keep doing it on a regular basis, then you are going to cause major problems. I've even seen people recommending to use DBAN and old programs like that, which are designed for, you know, uh, mechanical drives. And they're not going to work the same as it would on an SSD. So if you're buying one of these super fast, uh, you know, NVMe drives, and you're basically putting it in your computer, and you're using something like this on your computer on a regular basis and running weekly scans and overwriting data using methods like NSA overwriting methods or DOD, uh, which is to do in Ministry of Defence uh, scrubbing methods to remove data from the drive. You'll see them here on programs like this. They're on CCleaner as well and on a bunch of other programs. And if you enable these and start running these on your computer and doing six passes to remove data, it's just going to put a lot of wear and tear on your system. Even removing free space, just wear and tear on an SSD is just unnecessary. And that is using the secure race method. You don't need to be doing this on a regular basis. It is going to basically shorten the life of that drive. And last but not least, avoiding any sort of power outages is super important. Now, if you do live in a country where you have a lot of power cuts or a lot of power outages, this can be really ba bad for hardware, not just SSD, but it can be really bad for other hardware on your computer. So having any sort of interruption in power it's best to use a ups which we call a uninterrupted power supply this is basically a surge protector with a massive battery in it and it will uh, keep your system running and without having any sort of power loss it's great to stop having a major power cut and your pc just shuts down during a, a really important stage uh, you can actually stop that process and shut the pc down properly because you're protected with that uninterrupted power supply and uh, you can then shut the PC down until your power comes back on. Anyway, but that said, I think that's going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope this video has been some sort of use to you and I shall catch you in the very next video. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I do appreciate the support. Hope you have a lovely weekend and I'll catch you in the next one or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.